In New Zealand, a District Health Board Medical Officer of Health is required to approve all aerial 1080 poisoning operations and to set conditions. This video clip reviews the following document which was issued by the Medical Officer of Health for the pending 2018 Mount Pihanga, Mount Kakaramia and Turangi aerial 1080 poisoning operation. The aerial application will cover 30,000 hectares of forests and waterways that border Lake Taupo, Tongariro National Park and Turangi. Waikato Regional Councillor Cathy White requested information from the Medical Officer of Health after concerns were raised about water contamination by local residents. In his response, the Medical Officer of Health affirmed that people drawing water from streams that pass through or rise within the operational area and live within three kilometres of the operational boundary are entitled to water mitigation. In most cases, people not living immediately next to the operational area and are not a registered water intake are not informed or aware about their right for alternative water and in many cases are not informed of the day the poisoning operation is to occur. In a 2015 aerial operation undertaken on the Coromandel Peninsula, dozens of families were drawing water on the day 1080 poison bait was dropped directly into it. They were not informed about the poison being applied to water or that they were entitled to mitigation. We just want to know the basic facts. When will they be dropped? When do we take our water line out of the river? And how long is the withholding period? So just basic things, you know, all well, politics aside, that's the basic information that we want. And we haven't received any of that, no visits, no nothing. When the Department of Conservation eerily dropped bait up the back of the ranges here, were you informed? No. No, not at all. And, and with your water here, you're, you're drawing water from your creek, are you? From the Tepuru stream, yes. And uh, during that whole period of time, was it drawing? It would have been on and off, yes. In previous years, have you been informed about the aerial poison drops going on behind here? Not about poison, no. We've been told about flooding and to turn the pumps off so we don't suck the muck into the system, but I've never been told about dropping of poison, no. But it affects everybody. You know, it comes down all the streams. So it affects you. I think they should tell us or, or, or tell us what to do about it if we don't want it in our water supply. When the Department of Conservation was asked why it did not identify all people drawing water around the operational area, it stated, It was not a requirement from the Waikato District Health Board for us to walk all streams to find unregistered water intakes to undertake mitigation for the Southern Coromandel Pest Control Operation. Section 14.3b of the Resource Management Act permits people to draw water from streams for their domestic needs without the requirement for a Resource Management Act consent or to be registered. The following information was provided by the poisoning contractor for this operation. Water mitigation agreements vary greatly for registered intakes depending on your negotiation skills. For example, if you are water intake number 3, you will enjoy a 100 metre exclusion around supply intake, a water test after 24 hours to determine when the poison has passed through, and 50 litres of drinking water. If you are water intake number 14, Waihi Village, you will be provided with alternative water and a water test after 24 hours. If you are water intake number 10, you will enjoy a 50 metre exclusion only. If you are intake number 16, you will not receive any mitigation, as it is stated your intake is outside the treatment area. It should be noted, however, intakes within 3 kilometres of and outside the operational areas are still entitled to water mitigation if the source passes through or rises from within the operational area. And if you are intake number 18, you are in a more favourable position because it is stated that toxic bait will not be dropped into creek where water comes from and sourced. All people drawing water from streams which flow through 1080 poison forests should be aware that heavy rainfall can cause land-based poison to enter streams. Poisoned animal carcasses may also decompose in waterways for months after aerial operations. The Medical Officer of Health also stated that buffers or exclusions have not been set around streams within the operational area unless they are the source of a water supply.
In most sterile operations, 1080 poison bait is dropped directly into all running water at the same rate as the land areas within the operational areas. In 2015, this same area was eerily spread with 1080 poison bait. The official toxin distribution records released by the Department of Conservation shows that the poison bait was spread across almost all forest streams. The Hunua Dam catchments are due to be eerily spread with 1080 poison bait again within the next few months. The 2015 toxin distribution records show that almost all waterways feeding the Auckland water supply dams had 1080 poison bait dropped directly into them. In this Turangi aerial 1080 poisoning operation, the Medical Officer of Health has permitted an application rate of 3 kilograms of bait per hectare. The government-owned 1080 poison factory's warning label states that just 30 grams of bait may kill an adult human. That equates to 100 human lethal doses spread across every hectare of land and water. The permission document states that 1080 poison bait will be eerily spread to within 50 metres of Lake Otomangakau and Lake Rota Ira, among others. And for Lake Rota Panamu, 1080 poison bait may be laid closer than 20 metres, provided all practical steps are taken to ensure baits are not deposited in a manner where they can fall into these waterways. The poison bait is permitted to be dropped directly onto the Lake Rotopanamu walking track and most others. In most aerial operations, the public walking tracks remain open, but there are no warnings for trampers and forest users about drinking water from the forest streams. Did you see any signs saying don't drink the water? No, I usually check, but if it's a river, it should be clean. But there were no signs or anything. Did you know the choppers were, what were, did you know what the choppers were I doing? I thought it was a bushfire, but no, no idea. The seven helicopters used to spread the poison bait were loading from the edge of the Makarora River, which flows into Lake Wanaka. You're walking the uh, track here and you're obviously doing a bit of a big walk. Yeah. H have you been informed about any uh, poison uh, bait in water? Uh, not in the water as such, I've only seen the signs that say that 1080's been dropped by the helicopters in the area. Have you seen many baits on, on your trip so far? Yeah, quite a lot of baits on the track itself. So what's your plans? You've got a big... Uh, going up Top Forks now and then I'll go over Rabbit Pass. I'm out at near Wanaka. How it's many days? Uh, the eight days all up, seven or eight days. Would you be drinking water from the streams on your way around? I have been, yep. You know, being a tramper into the clean green wilderness of New Zealand, do you think that there, there should be a warning to trampers, you know, saying whether you, you know, informing you the baits in the water? Yeah, absolutely. It'd be a big concern if you can't drink the fresh water because you don't want to be carrying the water along these tracks. It's one of the big advantages of doing this track. Animal Control Products, which is owned by the New Zealand government, imports, manufactures and distributes 1080 poison bait. In its 1080 poison warning label, it states, 1080 wastes are ecotoxic and take measures to minimise the chance of baits accidentally entering any body of water and harmful to aquatic organisms. Helicopters will spread 1080 poison bait to within 50 metres of New Zealand's main arterial route, State Highway 1, and also to within 50 metres of State Highway 41, 46 and 47. In its misinformation document, TB3 states that hunting can resume approximately four months following the control work, or after two months if 100 millimetres of rain has fallen. New Zealand can have large rain events, where more than 100 millimetres can fall within a 24-hour period. Heavy rain may result in increased animal carcasses entering waterways, but it does not mean a forest is safe within two months of an aerial application of 1080 poison bait. This poison deer carcass was mummified and still intact four months after a winter aerial operation in the South Island. It is still extremely toxic while in this state of decomposition. If you are part of a consultation process when an aerial operation is being planned, we suggest you are consulted as a community group, not as individuals. Be prepared and informed and you may stand a chance of preventing the poisoning of your environment and waterways in the next aerial poisoning operation. If you would like more information about aerial poisoning operations in New Zealand, please visit tvwild.co.nz and 1080science.co.nz.